y'all know I get ready to preach every week. And so every week when I get ready to get up to the mic and it's time to get started, I think of all the pastors and preachers who have gone before me and how they so eloquently start their sermons and they just get into them. And every week I come to the mic and I'm always clueless. So thank y'all for just letting me get through it going, good morning. Because I never know what the special words are. I probably need to watch a few more on TV. I don't know. But there's some special words. You ever know special words they say to get people really engaged into what's happening with the service? They say whatever and people just lean forward. And the next thing you know, folk are writing in checks and sending in things. I never know what the special words are. And I always come up and I'm like, I don't know, Lord. I'm going to just try to do it because you said, not because I know what to do. So here we go. I don't know what to do, but. He said, do it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with it. Amen? Amen. 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 You have heard the scripture that has been read. We are in the fourth week of our introspective into the life of Jacob. I hope it has been a blessing to you. I hope you have gleaned something um, different from it, something that has stayed with you, that has stuck with you, something that just makes you so say, you know what? Maybe I need to go back and read it. That's, that's my hope. If that hasn't happened, I'm sorry. I mean, genuinely, I'm, I'm sorry if that hasn't happened, but I'm sure that as we continue to go through this, that um, God will touch each and every one of us to help us to know that there's something greater within these words. Sometimes when we're dealing with things in the Old Testament, people kind of like to shy away from them and turn them off because it's the Old Testament, and the New Testament seems sometimes so much more richer and, and so much more um, closer to what we're dealing with, but Every word in the Bible is a good word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we just thank you for this opportunity, for this time to come before you this morning. Lord God, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds to be receptive to what it is that you would have the people of God to get this morning. Now, Lord God, I ask that I preach not a good sermon, but a sermon that truly does some good and so that uh, you would sit down and stand up with it, sit me down and stand up within me so that the people of God truly may be blessed. These are the things I pray in your name, and I say amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, you know, when we started talking about, um, let me stop there. I already know I'm not going to use my notes. Not because I don't want to, but I feel like walking because I'm nervous. When we started the book of Jacob, what we found was that um, we knew Rebecca, she was pregnant with these two twins and the pregnancy was difficult. And so she had asked God, what's going on with my body? And God had said to her, you've got these two nations inside of you. Anybody remember that? She had the two nations and they would be warring and the younger one would rule over the older one. Anybody remember that part? Okay, and so Rebecca knew that the youngest son, Jacob, would have to rule over Esau. Now her husband Isaac also knew this as well because remember, they spoke to God, they talked to God, they prayed to God before these children were ever even conceived. He had come to the Lord. So he knew what was going on. So when we find them in this story, <coughs> I mean, Jacob is, uh, Isaac is talking to Esau and he's letting him know I've got a blessing for you because you're my older son. I've got a blessing for you, so I need for you to go out, go hunting, make me some of that good stew that you make because it's just so delicious. I love I love a good hot meal on a plate. Anybody? Any? There you go. There you go. If you can't get them with the message, get them with the word. So his father sent him out to prepare this meal. He said, go out, get the fatted calf, go get yourself a, a nice dog, maybe a goat. I don't, I don't know what kind of stew it was, but it was a good one. And so he waited for his son to come back. So we already see that Isaac, knowing that the blessing was supposed to go to the younger son, was preparing it for his oldest son. Now, we've already talked in the past how Isaac loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. So as we keep walking through this, I think it was two weeks ago, I talked about the portrait of dysfunction on how these things were occurring, how it was just craziness and mayhem within that family because they didn't have the right type of relationship. It wasn't the, the right type of, of, of interaction. It wasn't the right type of understanding. It wasn't just a natural type of, I love you because you're my family. It was, I love you because you're more like me. And 
eh, you're just the other child. So, so we know they had that type of thing going on. But here's the kicker of this story. Rebecca was listening in. Now here you have a father talking to his son, trying to explain, I've got a special blessing for you. I want you to go ahead and get it. His wife is listening in the other room. I don't know how far it was. I don't know if she was up the steps and, and heard it. I don't know if she had her ear to the window. I don't, I don't know if she was listening through, you know, the vents of the, the heat. Okay, they didn't have vents in the heating system. But y'all know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I don't know how close or how far she was, but she heard this. And so she ran and she got her favorite son. She got Jacob and she said, look, I need you to go ahead Put these animal skins on. Try to make yourself smell like your brother because your father's about to hand out the blessing. Now, here's the thing that makes it interesting. What we know for sure is that Rebecca was fully aware that God had said the blessing would go to Jacob. He was the younger son. He was going to be the one who was blessed. He was going to receive it. We learned that way back in chapter 25. Y'all remember? So when we get to today... And we have these shenanigans going on. The first thing I said was, this is not even a real word, but I'm going to say it anyway. Way Casey, why would she do that? Now, <clears throat> Way Casey, as I said, is not a real word. My grandmother made it up. And Way Casey means anything you needed to mean at any point in time. So if y'all ever hear me say Way Casey in the sermon, don't be alarmed. Just know I'm channeling my inner flora. It's my grandmother speaking. And so when I heard, I'm reading that, and I'm going, wait, Casey, what's going on? What kind of family would have this much deception, would have this much crazy, convoluted behavior, would be this? And then I started thinking, oh, well, there was the Kardashians, you know? There is getting to know the Chris. It's a whole bunch of families got some crazy lunacy going on on television. So when I thought about it like that, it just wasn't quite that bad. But what I realized in the midst of all of that, as much as she was um, going against the order that God had said, as much as, as Isaac was going against what Abraham, uh, not Abraham, what God had said for him as well, but that there was still a blessing that was to take place from this story. And so the thing that was really interesting in that is I realized that there was a couple of things that occurred for this blessing to actually occur. Now, we already know what the outcome is, hopefully. But what I realized is that the very first thing that we have to do in order to be a blessing to someone is that we have to <clears throat> actually touch them. A blessing has to actually be felt. It tells us in verse 21, it says, Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son or not. You know, when you get ready to be a blessing to someone, when God gets ready to bless us, it's something happens where we actually have to be touched. Something has to go on. It, it may be a physical touch. It, it may be an emotional touch. It, it just may be a, a comforting word, but it, it has to be a touch that takes place in order for a blessing to occur. It has to be something that's bestowed upon you. Think about it, if you will. Some of the greatest blessings come when somebody just comes and puts their hand on your shoulder and goes, you're the greatest. I'm so glad I got to know you. That's a blessing when somebody tells you that. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you look at your spouse, and I'm, I'm hoping you wake up in the morning and look at your spouse and, I'm so glad you're here. In my mind, that's how it works. If that's not how it works for you, don't tell me. Just let me feel it that way. But, but when you have that blessing, it comes because that physical touch that takes place. In my house in the mornings, seriously, this happens every morning. Get up and get dressed. And then I, on my way down the steps, I'm screaming all the way down the steps, Mom, where are you? It, we're the only two people in the house. We're the only two people in the house. I'm upstairs. She's downstairs in her room. So when I come down the steps with her saying, where are you at 8 in the morning? She's in her room. I know this without a doubt. But every morning I run to her to see where she is so I can see what's going on, so I can get that blessing. Now, some mornings I'll get a hug. Some mornings I'll get a kiss. Some mornings she just looks at me like, what's wrong with my baby? But every morning, it's a, well, you know, she's known me a while, but every morning it's, it's a touch that happens. 
so that this transfer of blessing can come, so that you can feel it deep down in the recesses of your soul. And so I was like, okay, okay, I can get with that. But I realized there's something more that comes with the blessing. A blessing has to be spoken as well. So you get touched, and then something is also said. It tells us, let me, let me point that out to you, it's in verse 27. Let me find it, let me find it. Verse 27, 27. Is it verse 27? It's verse 27. Let me find it. Wait, let me take my glasses off so I can see it. Here we go. Here it goes. Verse 27, it says, So he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said, "Ah, The smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. See, sometimes when you're going to be a blessing to someone else or you're going to receive a blessing in your life, Someone has to speak that thing over you. Someone has to tell you what that particular blessing is. Someone has to actually say the words that let you know that this is what's happening. Because sometimes we don't really understand, we don't really realize how how beautiful it is to actually speak a blessing to someone. They don't really get the full mint, the, the full gist of it. They don't necessarily understand all that's going on unless you actually say to them, bless you. Unless you actually speak words over them saying, I'm rooting for you. Unless you can really just straight look them in the eye and say, it is such a pleasure to see you today. See, a blessing isn't just when you touch them to get their attention. When you touch them, it gets them their attention to let them know it's coming. But when you actually go ahead and speak the words, it helps them to know that thing which is coming up next, that thing which is going to be set in motion. And so that's what I really loved about the story, not not the fact that the family is all jacked up. If we want to see jacked up family, some of us, we can just go home and look in the mirror. So we're not going to focus in on that part. I ain't talking about nobody in here. I'm not talking about nobody in here. But what we have to understand is that the blessing that comes in spite of that anyway, Now think about this. God had already spoken and said, the Lord had already spoken and said that the younger will receive the blessing. The younger will rule over the older. So it didn't necessarily have to be a situation where the parents were trying to maneuver the children so that the particular one would get the blessing. It was going to work out the way God wanted it to anyhow. See, that's what we forget in life. Sometimes we start maneuvering, trying to finagle things, trying to get them to happen the way we want them to. And God has already spoken and said, I'm going to bless you in this way. And so we try to help God along and make sure that the blessing comes the way that we think it should come, as opposed to just letting God bless us how it's going to happen. Because once God says, I'm going to bless you, then that's what's going to happen. Once God says, I'm going to take care of you, then that's what's going to happen. So when we're in prayer and we're talking and we're listening to the Lord and the Lord begins to speak in our lives, begins to speak over our situations, begins to tell us what's the next step, what's the next phase, what's the next thing that's going to occur. We don't have to do anything to try to make it a little different. We don't have to do anything to try to position ourselves in such a way so that it happens. We don't have to do anything to try to help God along with all of this. I mean, let's just think about it. We're talking about the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who put the very sun, moon, and stars into place, the the very God who created each and every one of us. And we like to think that we need to help God to know how to bless us. And what I'm saying this morning is, We don't have to help God to know how to bless us. All we have to do is get out the way and let God bless us. But you're saying, how can I let God bless me if I don't know what's going to happen, preacher? Well, I'm telling you what's going to happen. The first thing is going to happen is you're going to receive a touch. Somebody's going to come and physically touch you to get your attention so that you know this blessing is on the way. And then it's going to be spoken over your life. Well, you're saying, well, I don't necessarily believe in people coming to prophesy over me and give me a blessing. Well, I didn't say that it had to be a person. It could just be the mere fact wait a minute a bible am i not touching the bible will i not read the bible and hear the blessing that god will bestow upon me 
See, it's, it's, it's real, it's real basic. It's not, it's not terribly hard. We just simply have to be touched by the word and then receive it when it's spoken to us. But sometimes if we're not really reading our Bibles, and, and once again, I'm, I'm not talking about anybody in here. I, I, I don't really know what's going on at your homes. I, I'll just turn my back so nobody feels bad. But if we're not reading our Bibles, if we're not opening our Bibles, if we're not actually touching our Bibles, we can't receive that particular blessing. Anybody feel me on what I'm trying to say this morning? There's a way to be blessed. There's a way to receive a blessing. There's a way to be a blessing unto someone else. Because sometimes our blessing comes in blessing somebody else. Well, preacher, how do I bless somebody else? Well, see, when you bless somebody else, you don't want to sneak up on them. You want to let them know you're coming. So you want to walk up to them and you want to go, Anne Marie, girl, have I got a word for you. You see, you get her attention. We're in COVID, so I can't go touch. I got to keep the six feet. But I can call her name so she can know, ah, pastor called me. You felt that, didn't you? She did. She was like, oh, my God, now she's using me for an example. That's all right. I just, I just picked somebody. But if I say, I have been praying for you, hoping that everything goes just well, so glad to see that you're back here after dealing with all of those shots, knowing that she had gotten bitten by the dog and had to go through the series of rabies shots. I, in my mind, that's one of the most excruciating things, but it can't be, she's here. So when I say I'm just so overjoyed to see you this morning, and I'm so glad to know that you came out yesterday, even after what you had been through and said, that's all right, because there's still work to be done for the Lord. And I say to you, God is going to bless you for your faithfulness. That's it. That's how you have to be a blessing to somebody. That's what we've got to learn, how to be a blessing to somebody. So just remember, get their attention. Once COVID is over, you can touch them. Until such time, just call them and get their attention. And then speak those words over them that God has already told you to say. See, it doesn't have to be something scary. It doesn't have to be anything big. It could just be, Nancy, I'm so glad you're a member here. You're just the greatest thing since sliced bread. I think you're marvelous. That was a blessing right there. Now, somebody's sitting there going, well, why didn't she call my name? I couldn't think of it, but I still love you, and I'm still glad you're here. I still think you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. I had a whole bunch of folks' names to come up with. I have a whole bunch of names to remember. But I'm happy for each and every one of us. And what we've got to do is just learn to be a blessing. But before we can be a blessing, we got to know how to receive a blessing. Amen? That's what I got. When I read it, I'd love to say, ask what y'all got, but we're not going to do that. We're going to stay focused on what needs to happen. But that's what we have to do is, is to remember that in order to be able to bless someone, we have to know how to receive a blessing. But more importantly, we have to understand that when that blessing comes, it comes straight from above. It comes straight from the Lord. And the beauty of it is that the Lord doesn't look at us and say, I'm not really going to bless y'all today. He doesn't hold anything against us. There's no recount of what happened in the past. The Lord just simply says, I'm going to bless them because they're my children. Think about this. We got Isaac and Rebecca, demon and conniving, not only against each other, but against the Lord. Because they're trying to make sure their favorite child gets the blessing. Now, God could have looked at that situation and said, Psh, I'm not being bothered with any of them. You, you get what I'm saying? But that's just not even the kind of God that we serve. We serve a God who, in spite of what we try to do to sway things, in spite of what we, oh, hey, and um, I forget your husband's name. Bill. Bill. 
it's so good to see you. I'm sorry. I just happened to look up and see them, and I hadn't. Forgive me. I should have spoken afterwards. But anyway, it's good to see you all here in the house of the Lord. Um, but God could have looked and said, I'm just not going to be bothered with any of that because of the way they were trying to, to finagle it and finesse it and trying to change the outcome of it and who was supposed to receive what. And yet, because God is so perfect, because God is so gracious, because God is an ever-loving creator, because God is the one who set everything in motion in the first place. God simply looks past all that they had done and all that they had tried to do and says, let me go ahead and make sure that Jacob has this blessing anyway. I'm going to take care of Esau in the end, but this blessing was rightfully meant because God had already said it was, even before they were born. This is the blessing that goes to the younger. And so it came to pass. Well, the same thing happens for us. God looks at us and says, I know you've been trying to make it go the way you want it to go. I know you've been sending them emails, talking trash. I know y'all been texting back and forth. I know y'all been this, that, and all of the other. I remember that time back in the 90s. You remember that time back in the 90s? No? Okay. It could it could have happened. Somebody might have said, "Yeah, Lord, I'm so sorry." You know, but but he God already knows the things that we've done that have been contrary, and yet God still says, "But they're my children. I just love them so. They're just as precious to me now as we were the day that God decided to create each and every one of us." And that is the greatest gift. That's the greatest blessing that we could ever have. The fact that God looks past all of us and simply sees the child that he created. God doesn't look at us and go, wow, they're kind of messy. Nope, God just looks and says, you know what? They're just right the way they are. I'll make them be what I want them to be. I'll lift them up and put them where I need them to go. I'll carry them through whatever I don't want to discourage them. I'll move them past whatever it is that's been hindering. I'm going to bless them because they're my children and I'm not going to let anything that they or anyone else does or do hinder me from blessing them. Because I want to bless them in such a way that they learn how to not only receive a blessing from the Lord, but to be a blessing to someone else in the Lord. Amen? I'm really done this time. I'm done. I'm done. I promise I'm done.